We believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. In other words, we believe in dividing verses to the right group of people and right time period. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to combine all the verses together and come up with major wrong doctrine. Uh, what do you think I'm going to write? Matthew what? <laughs> okay, go to 24. <laughs> All right, I told you. See, you're going to know more than Satan Anderson's church members. Now let's go to the passages right here. In these passages, what we believe is this. So, the post-tribulation rapture people, they're going to insist that there is a rapture after the tribulation. We believe in that. But we believe that this is for tribulation saints. The Christians, see, different time period, have their own rapture. Church age Christians have their own rapture. So there are two different raptures. One for church age Christians before the tribulation, one for saints after the tribulation. And when we get raptured, you got to realize this. Before the tribulation saints get raptured, the church is already up in heaven at the marriage. So this should be evidence that we will not go through the tribulation at this time. And they might say, oh no, that's not true. Well, let's go with scripture with scripture. Matthew 24. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 24. The famous passage proving a post-tribulation rapture. So we're not going to deny that. There is a rapture after the tribulation, but it's for tribulation saints. Okay? Now, notice how it reads right here. <clears throat> In verse 42, uh, verse 42, this tribulation rapture is described as, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Right? You don't know when he's going to come. Verse 43, But know this, that if the good must... Good, Goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Notice right here, when he comes down and uh, raptures, that it's going to come like a thief, and God wants you to be watching. But it's not for Christians, it's for tribulation saints. Anyways, let's look at verse 44. Therefore be also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Notice right here, Jesus Christ is speaking to them to be aware and ready whenever he comes because he's going to come like a thief and rapture them. People are going to say that these are for Christians. No, it's for Jews. And you hear me quote this over and over again, but just in case this is new to people, verse 16, verse 15, and then verse 20, you notice that those are all Jews. There's no doubt about that. Now let's go to Luke 12. Luke 12. All right, so we do know this. This rapture, he comes like a thief. You have to be watching. If you known, then you would not be sleeping. If you known, if you were aware, had known. We see that wording, right? Now notice the similar wording with Luke chapter 12. Verse 39, and this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when he think not. No doubt, right? Can we all agree with that? Yeah, we can all agree with that. That matches, Luke 12 matches with Matthew 24. Go backwards now, okay? Let's start backwards and downwards, okay? Verse 38, and if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants, these servants who watch get raptured. Let's keep going backwards. Verse 37, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. So he comes down, raptures, raptures these people up so that they can join him at his meal up in heaven. Well, this is after the post-tribulation rapture, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, look at verse 36. Keep going backwards. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he, what? Will return from the what? Wedding. Oh, 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 forbidden terror. 
Makes sense. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Da, 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 da. We're already up in heaven. We're feasting at the marriage supper of the Lamb. These people later join and catch up. Where will you be at the tribulation? You're already at the marriage. You're already at the marriage. Oh, that's not true. That's not, hey, hey, stop mumbling and go to Revelation 19, all right? You have to be there. You know why? Let's use some common sense. How can God have a wedding if his wife is not there? <laughs> so let's use some common sense, people. He's married to who? Marriage to who? The church. His wife. Let's put wife. Wife is what? The church. Now we're going to look at verses proving that. Let's look at Revelation 19. <coughs> Revelation 19. <coughs> Verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his what? Wife hath made herself ready. She's already up there at the marriage. But he returns. This is returning from the wedding. Meaning it's already been undergoing. Meaning his wife was already up there long before this event occurred. If you don't believe me, then look at Ephesians. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter. Ephesians chapter 5. Chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Are you part of the body of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So not a single member is going to be left behind. You are the body of Jesus Christ. Verse 30. For we are members, we are members of his what? Body of his flesh and of his bones. See, all the members are there. Now, who is the members of the body? For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Paul makes a comparison to a husband and wife. Speaking of verse 32, this husband and wife, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning who? Christ and the church. Okay, now this should be proof right here. You got Revelation 19. She's all ready. You got Ephesians chapter 5. Proving that the wife is a church. And you got Luke chapter 12 as a thorn in the side. And you can't get away from Luke 12 because that matches with your favorite post-tribulation passage. What do you think I'm going to write? What's your favorite post-tribulation passage, yeah, church? 24. Okay, let's be fair, okay? It's Matthew 24, right? We all know that, see? Matthew 24. You all memorized it by now, like John 3, 16. So notice right here that Luke 12 and Matthew 24 proves he's returning from this. So we were already underway long, long time ago. And by the way, if you look at the entire, and I mean the entire book of Revelation, a literal rapture, there is only one you can find for a literal rapture, and that's the tribulation saints. In the entire book of Revelation that discusses the entirety of the tribulation. That means the Christians were long way up there. But that would make sense because... Before the first seal of the tribulation is open at Revelation 6, what did Revelation 5 say? People are already up in heaven washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, oh, see, Scripture with Scripture, everything's clicking. You know what Stephen Anderson will try to do? He's going to try to make this marriage supper sometime after the tribulation when he conquers the kingdom. So that's what he's going to try to do. But look at the book of Matthew 22. Matthew 22. <coughs> Matthew chapter 22. You know what the simple answer is? It's very simple. Did Jesus Christ stop the wedding when he raptured these people up? No, it's continuing. He's returning. And let's assume that the marriage continues down here. Guess what he's doing? He's continuing. It's that simple. Otherwise, if you say it starts here, how are you going to explain Luke 12 where he returns from the wedding when he starts the rapture for tribulation saints? What are you going to do? So Matthew 22, verses 8 through 14 
Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Verse 10, Servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him out into outer darkness. So notice right here that the servant, there's an evil servant who invades the marriage supper of the Lamb. How can you do that if it's up in heaven? So it must be on earth then. So it would follow logically that the marriage is also down here. But it's not as difficult as you think. The simple answer is it's just like because just because this event occurs and this event occurs doesn't stop the wedding. He wants to continue it so not just Christians, not just tribulation saints, but all kinds of people can partake in the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's a simple answer. Not like that there's three or four or five different marriages or whatever, but that it's just simply continuing. That's it. I mean, Luke 12 just told you as well, because of this event, he doesn't start a second one. It's returning from it. It's returning.